The Huron River Watershed Council has been improving and protecting the Huron River and the watershed that creates it for over 50 years. As a result, the Huron is now considered to be the cleanest urban river in all of Michigan. The Huron is used by wildlife as a home and as a source of food. The Huron sustains us and provides opportunities for fun and recreation. But it wasn't always this way. In the 1950s and 60s, industrial and housing development was causing increasing pollution, threatening the river. This threat led the state health department to temporarily restrict expansion of any sewage treatment plants until the pollution could be better understood and controlled. Keeping the Huron River clean and safe takes a lot of work. The Huron River Watershed Council's River Roundup has been instrumental in doing so for 20 years now. It's a very clever method. They count the number of bugs living in the water. Jason Frenzel of the Huron River Watershed Council explains. What we say is that the higher the diversity of bugs in the waterway, uh, the generally the healthier the stream. So certain bugs are, are more pollution tolerant. Uh, mosquitoes live in stagnant water. And some bugs are very pollution intolerant. Stoneflies, for example. And those, the diversity uh, in general and the specific species that are represented from any lo sampling location at a particular time tell us a lot about the general water quality health. We've been able to take the data and get local legislation passed, influence local decision makers, cities, landowners, and in a couple of cases influence uh, state regulations also. The city of Ann Arbor, using our data, put into place a phosphorus ordinance. And phosphorus runoff or leaching create algal blooms and algal die-offs, and we've had some serious problems with that in the Huron as well as downriver in Lake Erie. Is that ordinance that, and our data went on to support a state-level ban on the same. So our data indirectly went to help rivers and lakes throughout the entire state. So while this is a powerful method, which has helped transform the entire Huron River watershed, it has one big drawback. A large number of locations must be tested at the same time each year. Because if we, if we hit the same time window, it is highly likely that the data will be comparable year after year after year. And there's no possible way that the two of us that are paid to work on this program could go and collect that data. And so having citizen resources, having volunteers out helping us is, is essentially mandatory. So without enough volunteers, this valuable information about the Huron will be lost. This is where you come in. By volunteering for just a few hours, you can contribute to a science project and have a huge and long-lasting impact on the Huron. It's fun and easy to do, and you don't have to go into the water unless you want to. Roughly uh, 150 volunteers come into the office and they spread out all over the watershed to 50 different locations. Um, they go and collect the bugs that have been brought uh, to the shore by a trained collector. The week afterwards, we process those samples, identify all the bugs. Basically, that looks like sorting the bugs into trays based on what they look like. So anybody can do it. We have lots of, lots of families come, lots of college students that come out. We certainly have lots of retirees that come out. And then we have a few identification experts verify that what you pulled apart are the right things, that you didn't miss anything. I'm Zain al Habash, and I'm tagging along with her to have fun looking at bugs and learn a bit about them. It turned out to be quite beneficial, and the people around here are very nice nice and warm and welcoming. And then when you actually call them over to look at the bugs and uh, look at the types, they pinpoint out why they're different. And it's quite interesting to learn from experts who are willing to teach. When I was walking down the street the other day, and I thought, who am I gonna go to if I can't open my tap and have clean water? It's very invisible to us how we just live and we expect somebody else to take care of everything. And I'm thinking one day that person might be me or my daughter or her daughter. This 
is something we all need to be responsible and take care of.